The only thing we know for sure in software development is that things are going to change, and they are supposed to, but clean architecture has just the right tool for it. That's what they call the separation of concerns. But before I start talking about separation of concerns, please don't forget to like because that helps a lot. Now back to clean architecture. This is what you're going to see when you search for clean architecture in software development in general. You can see that the, the separation of concerns is implemented in four layers. But in my experience in Android and according to the projects that I've seen and that I work on, usually those uh, the clean architecture is implemented in three layers. So the first layer is what they call the presentation layer. Some people also call it the UI layer. And then we have the domain layer. Some people also call it the business layer. And finally, we have the data layer. Some people also call it repository layer. For me, name is not very important as long as there is a clear separation of those three layers in architecture. So in the presentation layer is where you're going to put basically everything that you're using to display data to the user. So activity, fragment, uh, view, uh, views, adapters, view model, literally everything that you're using to display colors and uh, UI to the user. And then we have the domain. So let's use an e-commerce application as example for your domain. One example of object in your domain layer would be a wish list for an e-commerce. And a use case would be adding a product to this wish list and removing a product to this wish list. You can see that there are some logics and some rules that you have to follow for those operations. And those logic should be in, in your domain. And we also have data stores, which are the definition or interfaces of how you're going to save, retrieve, and modify data. As you can see, those examples that I gave, adding a product to the wish list, removing a product to the wish list, has nothing to do with Android or iOS or web. It really belongs to your business, it really belongs to your domain. So in this domain, in this layer, you should avoid adding any, uh, any Android APIs. So no uh, fragment, no views, no context, no resources, nothing. Because if you do so, you, you would be breaking the idea of separation of concerns because all of that belongs to the presentation layer, not the domain. Finally, we have the data layer. So the data layer is where you're going to fulfill all the promises that you've made in your domain. So that's where you're going to implement your repositories and uh, that's where you're going to have the implementation details of those repositories, basically. So if you have um, a repository that is fetching a products uh, in your data layer, you're going to have the implementation of that. So Basically, you're going to communicate with either a database or shared preferences or an API. So now that you know what are uh, what are each of those layers and what goes in each of those layers as well, now let's see how is the interaction between them. So the presentation is allowed only to communicate with the domain. It, could, it cannot communicate with the data layer. And usually the way that you do it is by injecting the use cases and the interfaces of your repositories in your view model. But remember, those repositories, they are interfaces, they are not the implementation details. Because if you add the implementation details, they belong to the data layer, and that's breaking the idea of separation of concerns. And the idea is the same for the domain. Uh, usually you have use cases, and in, uh, you can also inject other use cases inside your um, use cases and you can also have access to those interfaces for your repositories and your data stores. Finally, in the, in the data layer, you are going to implement those uh, data stores, those repositories. So if you're going to have a wish list repository, you can either use Room or you can use shared preferences or an API to do it. And this is how your, uh, your architecture is going to look like. In my opinion, I think that clean architecture has a lot of benefits it's very easy to uh, understand, it's very easy to maintain, and it's also favor uh, writing tests. Because you have a very clear separation of each layer, it's very easy to write tests for it. And in my opinion, one of the main benefits is that making major changes, like for example, migrating from one API to another, or even changing from a database to an API, it's only going to affect your data layer, for example. So your domain, your presentation will remain intact. And that is 
uh, clean architecture in five minutes. I hope that now you have a better understanding of clean architecture and you know how to build it. And if you don't, I have a three hours course about clean architecture in Android. The link for the course is in the description. Go check it out. Please don't forget to like. And if I forgot to mention something, mention in the comments. That's it. Thanks for watching.